They are connected to, uh, in this case, some bushings and then a bulkhead fitting like you would use in a, let's see if I can get this off. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome to a Bitter Lemon Tech Tip. When you're racing in the summer, you have two problems to contend with, dehydration and exhaustion from heat. Now dehydration, we've done a video on how to build a drink system and I re recommend you look that up on this channel. Let's talk about heat. Well, the best thing then would be to cool the driver and that's exactly what you can do with a cool shirt like this. What it is is essentially a t-shirt with some tubing sewn in, then the tubing collects here in more tube. Um, I have an extension on here even because it exits on the left-hand side and usually that's where the door would be and not a cooler. And then it ends uh, up with some uh, quick disconnect fittings that you want because you want to get in and out of the car very quickly. Um, this, basically, you want your drivers to have these shirts. They cost about 100 to 150 bucks, depending on whether you use cotton or Nomex. Either way, you want, you're going to want to wear this on your skin. Um, then the other thing, as I mentioned, is the cooler. You're going to need to mount a cooler in the car. There, you have basically three options you can buy, and there's nothing wrong with that. Throwing money at a problem is perfectly valid, but it's a little boring, so we won't really talk about it here. So you can repurpose or you can build your own. So let's talk about repurposing. One option you have is for very cheap buy on the used, on the secondhand market, uh, one of these things. Uh, what this is, is a cooler uh, that people get uh, when they have knee surgery or something similar. Uh, they get, they typically get these kinds of pads they, that they put over the knee or whatever joint had been um, in surgery. And then you put ice water in here. Um, there would be a, let's see if we can open this. Um, then there's a pump in here. You add 12 volts uh, and uh, ice water. And uh, at the end of the day, this is gonna pump water through this thing. What you do is of course you uh, throw this thing away and you just connect your cool shirt. You might have to swap out these quick disconnect fittings. There are only a few different kinds on the market. Um, just make sure that all your drivers and your, your car uh, use the same one. You can get them on Granger or McMaster or uh, a similar type of hardware store with a really good selection. Um, so, uh, you can definitely do this and they have their use. However, uh, you might notice that the volume is rather small and on a really hot day, uh, this amount of ice water is gonna melt and heat up very quickly and it's probably only be good for an hour or so. Uh, therefore, these things still have their use and I recommend uh, getting some from eBay or a similar secondhand market if you can because they come in really handy in the pits when you're waiting for the car to, to come in. You're all suited up, it's 100 degrees out. Uh, you really wanna be as cool as you can. You wanna remain as fresh as you can before you get in the car. So. Uh, use these to power your pit crew. Um, so that nicely brings us over to building your own. Um, that's what we've done for our cars in the past uh, for a few reasons. A, it's the cheapest way to get the biggest volume cooler and you really can tailor the amount of cooling you need and the size of your cooler to the car and the space that you have available. And I'll show you the biggest one that we've built and you can imagine uh, kind of any size in between. Um, this one's quite the beast. And what it is, it is a, I don't know, 60 quart or 80 quart cooler or something like that. Um, the biggest one that we could fit in the 911's passenger, uh, basically passenger seat area. Um, and uh, this thing ended up being good for basically an entire race day. So that gives you an idea of how to scale up your system. Uh, you, if you wanna, be, if you're cool with basically filling up it, filling up your, your ice water, refilling it once a day, then just build half of this kind of cooler system. Um, the biggest cost is actually gonna be your cooler. These things are not cheap, but they work really, really well. The other things that you need in order to build your own cooler as well, let's start on, on the outside. Well, you need your quick disconnect fittings uh, to connect to your shirts. Uh, and again, you can use whatever system you want, just you need to be consistent between your shirts and your cooler. From there on, we go through some bushings into a bulkhead fitting. This fitting, you would use it in a bathroom or, or something like that. Uh, you can get them at your hardware store, some big washers. Uh, they're probably not necessary, but I used them just to make sure that I can get everything uh, nice and watertight with some RTV. Um, obviously, you install these by uh, hole sawing through this cooler. There's basically just foam behind this plastic. All right, let's take a look at what's inside in this cooler. 
All right, here you see the bulkhead fittings and one of them is connected to the supply, um, which is connected to a bilge pump. These bilge pumps, uh, you can get them on Amazon or uh, a hardware store uh, or a marine supply store for about 10 or 20 bucks. Um, all the tubing, of course, you can get there as well. Um, and uh, these things, basically, they, they draw in the water from below, uh, pump, it, pump it through here, through the shirt, and it comes back and just fills back up, uh, fills this, this uh, container back up. Uh, if you can, uh, so first of all, I would always recommend getting two pumps. Uh, if you can, uh, mount the spare pump actually in your cooler. These things do burn out, and the last thing you want to do is spend precious time remounting a pump or anything like that. Um, while the race is happening, you want to be able to just snip the zip tie, move the hose over, and call it a day. Okay, so you can build this thing not including the cost of this cooler, which is again good, probably going to be your, your biggest cost. You can build these for um, 50 to 100 bucks in hardware, depending on how much, how many pumps, and, and, and how fancy you get with your fittings and quick disconnect fittings, uh, uh, hoses, and, and, and everything else. And it depends on your mounting location. If you're mounted in the trunk, obviously you need more, more tubing. Um, and of course, you're gonna you're gonna need to um, give it 12 volts and, and all that stuff. The other reason why you might need a, a second pump or might want to mount a second pump in uh, in here uh, is um, to purge the tank uh, at the end of the day or to refill it. Uh, so I don't know if let's say this is an 80 uh, quart cooler, so that means when it's full, there's 150 or so pounds of water in here. Well, you're not gonna be able to lift that out. Uh, past the cage out of your passenger seat area or anything like that. So the best way to to refill it is to just simply pump out the old water. So connect uh, some more tube uh, to this pump, curl it up here. When the time comes, take the take the tube out, point it at the ground, uh, add 12 volts here, and this thing will be empty in a minute. Add the new ice, and you're good to go. Or just simply, you know, pull the pull the thing out of the car, uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the last thing that you're going to need to do to this thing is obviously mount it in the car. And like I said, this thing is going to, uh, you know, this size cooler is going to be about 150 pounds. So by basically the weight of a person. So a little bracket here or there, it's not going to cut it. Um, so I recommend actually mounting it like a person. So using uh, ratchet straps, if you have your passenger area um, set up for... Uh, a, a passenger harness, uh, then you can use the eye bolts uh, for the harness to to uh, attach some ratchet straps, especially uh, across from left to right and then front and back. You you really don't want this thing to start flying around in the corner or on a on uh, during during heavy braking. Um, another option is uh, if you don't want additional eye bolts poking through the passenger seat floor uh, or your trunk, uh, a really sort of low. Um, Profile solution is to mount e-track to your passenger floor or trunk floor. Uh, e-tracks uh, typically used to clip in ratchet straps in flatbed trailers. Uh, you can mount an e-track uh, bracket in front of it and in the back of it and use one ratchet strap uh, with e-track e clips uh, across this thing to really hold it down. Uh, this works especially well on a cooler that you're never going to open during the race because it's good for the entire day. Well, that's about it. Um, our tips for how to do driver cooling um, on like a large scale, i.e. one whole day for drivers uh, with quick disconnects for reasonable money, including a pit solution to keep you cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I would hope to see more of this. Uh, exhaustion is from heat is a uh, big factor in these races and staying alert keeps us all safer. So stay cool and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video about the Bitter Lemon and remember to subscribe our channel.